Okay, so this is tuna noodle casserole. So I saved a little bit for me, a little, little crunch of that breadcrumb. Mm. Hi everyone, I am Amy and I'm in my little kitchen. Uh, I work today, school is almost done, uh, but I did work today. Oh, I was so tired when I got back from work. I had to take a little like rest. I don't know why I was so exhausted today. I didn't even work a full day. Anyway, I am making what I would call comfort food galore. Uh, kind of, I think of it as a Midwest dish, but it's probably all over the country, East Coast, Midwest. But it's probably, you know, West Miss Midwest and the West Coast. But anyway, we are making a, toodle, a tuna noodle casserole. Boy, say that real quick. Tuna noodle. Tuna noodle casserole. I guess I can. Tuna noodle casserole. I know the name sounds kind of boring, but oh my goodness, so much flavor. It's rich. It's comforting. It's not rich. It's comforting. It's just got, you know, noodles with a nice creamy sauce with uh, sprinkled with some really good peas and maybe onions and celery, um, some tuna, uh, mushrooms. I'm making it a little bit different than what maybe some people do. I have some really good tuna that I picked up from a place uh, that I go to often, the Meeting Place. It's M-E-A-T-I-N-G, Meeting Place. So it's our butcher, it's our local butcher shop. Uh, a lot of local farms, you know, take all their, um, you know, their uh, cows and pork and so forth, venison, elk, all of that. Uh, a lot of them uh, have them you know, butcher it, prep it, and then sell it in their place and so forth. Anyway, they also sell some tuna, some really great fishermen's. I believe this is all in Alaska. North Albacore tuna. Hook, line, caught in the fishing vessel searcher. A family-owned business. This albacore is filleted and canned with no additives except for a little bit of sea salt. I mean, isn't that great? And I think it was Alaska. But anyway, I'm um, sorry, I thought I'd read this to you. Of course, I don't have my glasses on. What good is that? Albacore tuna, North Pacific premium albacore tuna. Fishing vessel. Anyway, really good tuna. I go there to get my tuna fish now, instead of maybe your more well-known brands. But they also pack this. This is um, this is almost eight ounces. Your typical small tuna can is five. You can maybe get it in six, but this is almost eight ounces of tuna. I'm doubling up this recipe because I'm going to take another meal. If you haven't heard already, Jer and Odge had their fourth baby. I've got lots of grandkids now. I'm very, very excited. So I'm gonna take them over another meal. And so I thought, you know, comforting, comfort food. Um, I took them over shepherd's pie, uh, my cheesy, in fact, the shepherd's pie recipe will come out on, uh, follow me on YouTube, my YouTube channel, Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen. And then I made them the cheesy chicken uh, recipe, pasta recipe. You can find that over there on Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen as well. And so then I'm making this one. They just really, especially Audrey, she just really wanted some nice comfort food. And you know, a lot of people kind of take this to summer picnics and family reunions and all that stuff. Anyway, I'm doubling up the recipe. So if I say four cans, the recipe that I will put, you know, for you guys to have will be like for a regular serving. If you want to double it, you, you more than can. So, I would probably only use two cans. You know, it's called tuna noodle casserole. I kind of want the tuna in it, but everyone loves pasta. So I'm probably gonna use four cans of tuna. That's a lot of tuna, but I think it'll be okay. I'm gonna chop up one onion. I'm probably gonna chop up all of these mushrooms because what I did, I made my own white sauce instead of using the cream of mushroom soup you can go ahead and use the cream and mushroom soup. Um, I'll put a note in the recipe. I can't remember if it's two cans or one, depending on how much you're serving. 
follow my recipe. I'm going to verify that. I don't want to say it off the tip of my tongue because I have to look at this other recipe. I want to say one, but one doesn't feel like enough. I think it's two cans of cream of mushroom soup um, with about a cup of milk, half a cup of milk, a little bit of sour cream, which I will do. And so since I'm not doing cream of mushroom soup, I made my own white sauce, which is creating a roux. Uh, melt the butter. I did probably four, five, six. I did six tablespoons of butter, six tablespoons of flour, two, four, six, probably at least six cups of milk. I usually start with four, let it thicken up a little bit, and then I add a little bit more because I want to judge the consistency that I want. I don't want it too thick because then when you bake the tuna fish casserole, um, noodle casserole, sometimes it'll turn a little dry. So you want it a little bit wet, but not runny. So I thought about, okay, I've got my mushrooms here. I'm going to slice these up. So I'll saute the onions, the mushrooms, and I'm going to add uh, two celery stalks to this and a little bit of garlic. Oh, the one thing about the sauce Sorry about that. I'm like, why is it boiling? I have it on low. So I turned it strictly almost off to on a simmer. I put salt and pepper obviously in it, but I did add a little bit of dill. I don't know, tuna fish, seafood. I just think of dill. So I added dill to the sauce as well. So I've got my peas here. Um, I'm only going to do one onion. Chris really doesn't like onions. But you need onions for, you know, some of your basic, you know, cooking. So I have, I'm just slicing up one onion. And it's not that bad this time. This is an onion I just cut out, I just cut. Um, and yes, I am using this knife because Chris gave me this knife. And, you know, I want to use it for him. It cuts really well. I'm only using one onion because Chris really doesn't like onions. And so, you know, I don't want to make it too oniony. I had some really small garlic, so I probably have like six cloves of garlic here. Doesn't even look like six cloves, does it? And so, I'm going to saute this. Uh, let me get a bowl for this. <clears throat> I'm not gonna have enough room on my cutting board. And I thought about another little thing to go into this. I can't remember how my mom did it. I'm not sure if she used red pepper, diced, you know, in small pieces, but I'm gonna use pimento. Just maybe about a tablespoon of pimento just to give it extra flavor and also um, <clears throat> a little bit of color. I thought that would be good. So one onion there, and then I'm gonna cut the ends off of here. And then I'm gonna cut up, I usually, oops. Maybe this will be better, huh? Get it more even. When the celery is big like this, I usually just kind of slice it in half. Well, that didn't go well. Oh, well. Well, you get the point. And then I'll chop it up some more because I don't want big chunks of celery. I just want little ones. Because the tuna is going to be flaky. And I want the tuna to shine. I don't want really big pieces of celery. So we'll see how this goes. So I went to Jaron Odge's house to get the baking dish that I made their other meal in because I went and bought that baking dish, nine by 13. It's really kind of cute because it has like this little etching. Where is it? Oh, there it is. It has like this little etching on it that looks like a basket. I thought it was cute. Anyway. Okay, so I'm just gonna just kind of chop, dice this up a little bit more. 
Boy, have a new celery. It's kind of crunchy, which is good. I like different textures in a casserole. You don't want everything smooth and soft. The one thing about cooking the noodles, I haven't cooked the noodles yet because I really wanted them, I wanted to focus on them and not be focusing on all this other stuff and then my noodles are overdone because you do not want to have mushy noodles. You definitely want the noodles al dente, al dente, al dente, al dente. El dente, because um, the noodles will continue to cook in the casserole. Okay, I think this is about done. Anyway, I have more grandkids. I'm so excited. Oh, poor Audrey, she's so tired. I don't blame her. You know, after having four kids myself, man. So, who knows? But I'm really excited for them. I know it's like I'm hanging out with my kids, especially during the summer, a little bit more than friends. I'm going over to Zach and Tori's house tomorrow. Hang out with the boys because Lila's got some place to go. You'll probably read about it on her social media, but so I'm gonna hang out with the boys for a little bit. And that'll be fun. And then I see Jacob and Mateo. The only people I really don't see very often is um, Molly and Joel. Because they're up in Spokane. I got to take a trip up there this summer. Long weekend. Just hang out. Okay, I guess that's enough. And hopefully this will be enough. I'm doubling up this recipe, so... Hopefully two stalks will be enough. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna add this right in here. So what else is going on? Man, tell you the truth, I'm really behind on recipes. I don't know what it is. I get home from substituting and I'm so tired. But I thought the year went pretty well. I thought I did a good job. Being a substitute, you never know what you're getting yourself into in the sense of the school, you know, the teachers, the kids, what's their makeup, how do they get along? But all the teachers have been wonderful. Definitely some kids, you know, they give you a run for your money, but it has been wonderful. It all went so much better than I thought. I still get nervous though, I really do. I still get nervous going into the school and saying, okay, I just think to myself, I hope I do a good job. I hope, you know, the students will, um, you know, not uh, take advantage of the substitute too much. Now this may seem like a lot of mushrooms because mushrooms do cook down, so. And I want to know. The reason I like making my own sauce too is because I can regulate the salt a lot better. I think canned soup has a lot of salt in it. Chris thinks I use too much salt. I'm sure you guys have heard that. Um, I don't. I mean, you definitely have to flavor food. And there's been some times where it's like, Amy, you put one too many sprinkles of salt in here. So I will omit that. Let's see, do we want another one? Okay. Yeah, I think, um, I think this will be good. Okay, as soon as I get this all chopped up, we are gonna go over to the stove and we're gonna saute this a little bit. And I think once I get this almost sauteed, because I've already made the sauce, I'll take you over there in a minute. Um, I'm definitely, you know what? In fact, I'm going to put on the noodles water. I, it was boiling a while ago, but I wasn't quite ready for it. But I think I'm going to turn it on now. So it's all ready for me. 
Okay, there we go. I wonder if this is going to be enough. I think so. And then pimentos. I'm just going to have like a tablespoon of pimentos and then some peas. So, I think we're finally ready to head on over to the stove. So, welcome to my little kitchen. Oh, one other thing I forgot. We need some a little bit of cheddar cheese. Ooh, little bit of, little bit of cheese in there. That'll be real good. Okay, here is my workstation. I know it looks kind of like a mess, doesn't it? But for me, everything's got to be close to my hands. And so it can't be all spread out. But this is the sauce. To trim up the water a little bit for the noodles. And that's where I'm going to saute the onion, celery, and everything else. I'm going to back you off just a little bit here. Okay, you guys good? Good there? I got laundry going on. Okay, we're gonna saute the celery and the onions. Don't need a little more butter. There we go. So get a little butter in there. I'm not ready to put the salt in. Just a little bit of salt. So I'm definitely sauce, salting the sauce. I haven't made this in so long. I wanted to make extra, so I might be able to double the recipe but get three meals. A little bit for Chris and I because there's only the two of us. Definitely uh, Jared and Ajahn family will get the main share of it. And then maybe I'll be able to have enough for Jacob and Izzy. Um, I'm not sure if... I don't know. I might bring it to Zach and Tori's house. I might do that since I'm going up there. Okay, we got this saute. In my... I'm gonna put in the cloves of garlic. I have you guys facing this way because when you, if I were to put the camera here and you face that way, I've got some cups that I just wash, you know, I've got a washcloth over the faucet in my sink. I got all the plants. My cookbook's there. I don't know, it just looks, well, this side probably looks messy too. <laughs> okay, we got this going. So I'm gonna saute this a little bit longer until the noodle, until the noodle, until the onions are cooked. Translucent a little more before I add the mushrooms because the mushrooms will absorb all of this. Oh, that looks pretty. Oh, it looks pretty. Huh. The green and white. Okay. My water is boiling. My sauce is cooking. Whoops. By George, we're making it happen. Okay, so I think my onions, garlic, celery, and mushrooms are cooked enough. Because, like I said, they'll continue to cook in the casserole. So I'm going to take this to the bowl where I have the tuna fish. The noodles, I just dropped those in. They're cooking right now. This really goes quick. It's not... It's, um, it's kind of an easy, good, hearty, comforting family dish to make. And it's tuna fish. I mean, tuna fish is good. I grew up on tuna fish, and I grew up on noodle, cas noodle casseroles. Tuna fish, uh, ground beef. We used to always call it hamburger, but <laughs> okay, let's go over and get this casserole going. Okay, I've got my cheese ready to grate. I didn't do that yet. Get some of this stuff out of the way, and I'm just gonna kind of just take my fork, just kind of break up the tuna fish. 
Like I said, I have four cans of tuna fish because I'm doubling up this recipe. But for you guys, I would probably only use two, you know, for a regular nine by 13. I just have to keep track of the um, noodles. So I'm just gonna break this up. So yeah, we're just gonna break this up. Oh, I forgot, I have the crazy TV on. Sorry about that, you guys. So I'm just breaking up the tuna. I've got four cans in here because I'm doubling up the recipe. And you know, tuna can kind of be dry. This is packed in water, not oil. I prefer water. I mean, if you want to drizzle a little bit of oil on it, I would just do tuna fish packed in water and then just drizzle a little of olive oil on there to create some moisture. Boy, I hope I packed up, hope that I cooked enough noodles. Okay. Now we're gonna add all of this deliciousness in there. There we go, see? Ugh. Hands heavy. Okay. Make sure I get all, every little bit out. Cause I figured you cooked it. There's a lot of good flavor in there. So I think I got it all out. Just gonna kind of make sure I get it off of the spoon. There we go. Okay, I think I'm gonna use this spoon to stir it up. So anyway, we just continue to mix it up. And because this is still hot, tell you the truth, I should have put the peas in with the onions and the mushrooms. But I think they've thawed out enough. And I don't need a lot of peas. Chris would prefer it that way anyway. But I just want enough to kind of get a little color in there. But these sweet, petite little peas, they're pretty good. Okay. And I use frozen, I prefer frozen. Because they're blanched, they're not all the way cooked really. Okay. Why does this little frozen? Mm. Kind of break it up here. Okay. And then we got a little bit of pimento. <clears throat> Let me see here. I'm just gonna do like two teaspoons. Let's see how that goes. Oh yeah. I like that. And again, it's just a little hint of a flavor. And like I said, I doubled this up, so I'm gonna go three. So I wouldn't go any more than two for the recipe that I'll write up for all you guys. Okay. Okay, there we go. Um, a little bit of cheese. I couldn't reach this because it was in the middle of my island. So, oh yeah, we just cut up. And I don't want a lot of cheese, but just enough to make it a little creamier. We got those little specks. So I don't know for this, maybe just half a cup. So we're gonna do this. And I think after I do this, I gotta check those noodles. Yeah, that's definitely a half a cup. 
Okay, I'm gonna check the noodles, okay? Okay, I drained my noodles. This is about a half a cup. I'm gonna mix that cheese in there. There we go. And I wanna see, cause I doubled the recipe, I wanna see if I wanna add any more. Okay. Let me just add just a little bit more. I eyeball it, sorry people. But uh, this whole dish is all about the tuna the noodles, and the sauce. All the extra make it too, like the peas and the, uh, the dill, the garlic. And as you can tell, there's not a lot of seasonings or herbs in this, but I put the dill in the sauce, which I thought would really enhance the sauce. But I didn't do thyme or any of that, because this is just very different than others. Okay. Okay. Now, the thing I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do now is pour the sauce over here and get this a little more like wet and loose so that when I fold in the noodles, they won't get all mashed up. I think I need a hot bath. I would pick a pan that doesn't have a handle. Because I'm too afraid of just pouring it in here, because of how heavy and tall it is, I'm just gonna scoop it. Now, if you want your sauce a little thicker, you can. Oh, I don't know why this turned out a little more loose than I thought. Mm. Just gonna mix that in there. There we go. Just gonna add some more. Mm. Like I said, I don't want it dried out as it cooks. The noodles will take a little bit more too. And it's okay if you have some chunks of tuna. Okay, there we go. Hmm. I wonder if I should add all of this into the big pot. I got too many pots here. I can't, I don't know how to judge. Um, here, sorry about that. This is what my tuna fish filling looks like right in there. Hopefully you can see all some of the ingredients in there. And then, oh, there's Daisy. She's waiting for some little dribbles, little stuff to fall on the floor. And there's my pasta. Okay, I just went ahead and just mixed the tuna fish, tuna fish mixture in with the pasta just right in this pot. So I think that's good. I still have a little bit of sauce left over, still a little bit of tuna mixture left over. But I think this will be great for Chris and I. Maybe I'll add one more, one more little spoonful. And then I'm going to since I'm not giving this to them until tomorrow, normally I would put this in, which I'm still going to do, I'm going to put this in a 9 by 13 pan, and then um, I'm just going to let it cool down before I put it in the fridge so that when they go ahead and bake it, they can bake it at home instead of baking it here and then baking it again. So let's come over here. And Willie will assemble. I can get you guys situated here. Yeah. Is that good? Is that good? 
Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. Right here. I buttered this paint, this um, nine by 13. So that it wouldn't stick. I thought this would make a lot more, but I thought I doubled it. But I am putting it in a nine by 13 pan. So we're just gonna scoop it out. And I might be layering it a little bit more. So yeah, I thought this was gonna maybe make two of these things, but obviously I was wrong. So I think the recipe I'll give you will be just this, and you can almost make one nine by 13 and maybe one nine by nine or eight by eight pan. Okay, Chris is out today, or tonight. That's why I'm doing this. But we're gonna have a tater tot casserole bake-off between he and I. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna save a little bit for my dinner tonight, and then the rest of it will be for he and I tomorrow. Well, maybe not tomorrow, because I'm over at Zach and Tori's house. <clears throat> so here it is, and all I'm gonna do next is, you can crush up some potato chips if you want. That's kind of the typical way of doing it. Uh, but I'm gonna do panko breadcrumbs uh, with a little melted butter, and as this bakes, that will, um, that will toast on top and give a little bit of crunch too. So, yeah, I think this is good. Okay, let me get those breadcrumbs going. Okay, guys, I'm going to finish this up. Here is the tuna, uh, tuna, tuna noodle casserole for dear and odd. I am just going to sprinkle these panko crumbs on top. Like I said, you can use crackers if you want, and that's fine. I've done it that way in the past but I didn't have crackers. I have more panko breadcrumbs in my pantry. And I am just gonna cover this up so that they can bake it when they're ready to eat tomorrow. And the breadcrumbs will turn all nice and brown. And I'll show you mine that, I'm, that I saved a little extra for, okay? Okay, sorry, <laughs> I tripped over my uh, recipe book that I wrote the recipes on. Okay, so this is tuna noodle casserole. So I saved a little bit for me, a little, little crunch of that breadcrumb. Mm. It reminds me of a kid, comfort food. It's wonderful and I love the creaminess, just enough of the cheddar cheese. And if you wanted more cheese, cheesy, add more cheddar cheese. It's delicious. But nothing in this overpowers the tuna fish, which is really what I wanted. And the sauce is still creamy. Um, I was able to control the salt and everything. So I don't know. I hope you give this version a try. I thought I was going to make two nine by 13, but I ended up making about one and a half. So I'll, I'll obviously I'll write up the recipe, follow the recipe. I hope you enjoy this video. It was a little squirrely, but you know what? That's how I kind of am in the kitchen. And um, I know it may, some of you may not like it, but I have fun in my kitchen. So I am appreciative that you guys are enjoying a lot of these recipes. Thank you so much. So go to my YouTube channel, amyroloffslittlekitchen.com. Subscribe to it. I would love it. This recipe along with a whole bunch more are on there and more to come. So keep gathering around your table with family and friends, and we'll keep gathering around mine with Chris and I. Anyway, tuna noodle casserole. I hope you guys like it.